Hey people, say hello to me. Hello. <laughs> Would you know that I just made up that name on the spot? <laughs> Anyways, Luli is my daughter's graduation bear because I remember that I shared in my Christmas video that my daughter recently graduated primary school. Yay! So she has started high school this year. Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> I am the proud mom of a high schooler and um, it's not too far now before her sister joins her in high school next year which means by this time next year i will not have a child in primary school anymore how cool is that but that is not what this video is about first things first my name is Chioma. thank you for stopping by here if this is your first time on this channel make yourself comfortable and let's talk about this thing okay but beyond just talking i am actually seeking your opinion so i'll be reading the comment section to know what you think and whether you have any suggestions for me. Let me begin. I am sitting in what is supposed to be my guest room and this place is a bit of a multi-purpose area especially for the girls. They use this place for their play, crafting, studying, you name it, okay? This is their extra space and this morning I walked into this room just wanting to know whether they left this place in a decent state because usually after they are done here, they just leave all kinds of mess behind. So I decided I would check and see that this place was clean. And fortunately for them, it was clean. However, there were just a few bits and pieces floating here and there. So I took my time to just arrange things a little bit, like put their books in a neat pile, um, put all the toys in one area. And while I was doing that, just touching their stuff and moving their stuff, it got me thinking. <laughs> so I, I, I got into this mood where I was just reflecting and it got me thinking about the girls and how quickly they have grown, right? And in that moment, I remembered when we first arrived in Australia and that very torturous flight from Nigeria with two tiny little toddlers okay <laughs> traveling all by myself with these two children it has to be the most horrible flight i have ever undertaken in my life and one that i will never do again i know that there is no chance of me traveling with a toddler in the future because i am done on that chapter you know um but if anything were to happen and i had to travel with toddlers i would be the first person to opt out so that's just to tell you how horrible that flight was but again that is a story for another day. If you would like me to share my flight experience, like flying from Nigeria with two little babies basically by myself all the way from Nigeria to Australia, if you would like me to share that story, please let me know because you might learn a, a thing or two if that is potentially looking like something you might experience. Well, while I was reflecting on that, I thought about how much the girls have grown um, and just how they are developing, not just physically, but you know developing their personality and it is becoming even more evident what kind of personalities they have individually just on that right it wasn't long before my thoughts circled back to something else that i have been kind of reflecting on a lot recently and this has to do with their connection to their roots and the question i have been asking myself recently is whether they are missing out on something is there something about that connection for them which by virtue of relocating from Nigeria to this place they will be missing out on and that's what I need your opinion about because thank goodness for technology technology is such a beautiful thing right the fact that you can FaceTime you can video call in real time with relatives back home it is wonderful they do speak with their grandparents every so often so they see them by video call they know what they look like and of course we do tell them stories about their extended family so their uncles and aunties who would be either my siblings or my husband's siblings so my sister in particular has kids closer to their age and i feel like of all the cousins that they have maybe my sister's children offer a stronger potential for them to build a rapport or a strong relationship with just because they are closer in age to my own kids all their other cousins are babies they are very young but even then even then I see the struggle I call my sister up on video call and we're talking and then her kids get involved in that call she tries to involve her kids in the call just as I try to involve mine um, and, I, and we try to get them to talk to each other but we can see that the interaction is is not organic it's not spontaneous 
it it requires a lot of nudging every single time that they've had to speak to each other it's either my sister or myself or both of us going oh ask them about this you know talk to them about this have you asked about that you know that's what we're doing trying to nudge them but they have so little in common that it would be difficult to sustain any kind of interaction for an extended time and it gets me really worried it's bad enough that they are missing out on family celebrations events incidents it's bad enough that not only them but us are missing out on a lot of those but for them i feel like it has the potential to become an even bigger missing piece of their lives if you get what i mean there's no other relative we have here in australia it's just the four of us their father myself and the girls so they only have us which is quite different to our own relationship with the extended family we have other connections and associations with the extended family that they do not have and i worry that they might never have those kind of connections maybe it is me just overthinking things because these are very young girls and there's nothing stopping them as they grow older to explore nigeria more um, and by extension see more of their extended family but i worry that even now they might not build enough of an interest or curiosity to even want to explore that side of them because i have seen this happen with lots of other families abroad you know diasporan families where the kids are born and grow up in that other country and they just pay lip service to the connection they have with wherever their parents are from sometimes it worries me a little bit now does it worry me to the extent where i might say that i regret us coming to australia just because i feel like my children are losing their connection to their roots certainly not i don't regret it to that extent but i do acknowledge that it's one of those sacrifices that we probably didn't think too much about when we made that move and it's turning out to become something that gives me pause every once in a while just thinking oh, did we do the right thing but moving on from that i do not regret it like i said i do not regret the fact that we made the decision to relocate um i feel like given the same circumstance over again we will make the same decision and now that we've moved on from there there's no need crying over spilt milk right we can't go back in time to rethink our decision now that we're here this is where I need your help. What exactly can we do about it? Do you have any suggestions? If you're someone who is in the same position or have ever been in the same position, what did you do? How did you get your kids to foster that connection to their roots? And of course, when I think about culture generally in relation to this particular subject matter, there's other elements to it. I think about the connection to their native language. And listen, on this one, I take full responsibility as a parent that I didn't do what needed to be done when the kids were much younger. It would have been easier then. I am not saying that it is too late, but the older they have become and as time continues to go by, it will become harder and harder for them to learn the language. At this point, my first daughter in particular, I feel like she is pretty much switched on when it comes to understanding the Igbo language, even though she can't speak it. We've tried several times to like teach them the basics um, and now they can maybe count from one to 10 in Igbo language. And they also know words for like parts of the body um, and some very basic things like come, which is bia. One that they know very well, courtesy of their mom is siabapo. They know that one very well. In terms of actually holding any kind of conversation in Igbo language, no, that's a no, no, that's a challenge. They can't do it. And on that front, I am still a bit hopeful because I remember that I didn't learn how to speak Igbo until I was about 13 or 14 years old. I wasn't born in Nigeria myself. And by the time we relocated back to Nigeria, I was around 11 or 12 years old. And when I got enrolled in school, which was in the east, in the eastern part of Nigeria, right? All the kids there could speak Igbo. I couldn't. And of course, that was a basis for a lot of bullying. I was bullied a lot because I couldn't speak the language and even when I tried the accent was very wrong okay it sounded like a foreign language but guess what it was the bullying that actually spurred me on to learn that language and how did I do it I started reading Igbo literature however I acknowledge that for my kids that might not be sufficient because I had the benefit of participation I was in an environment where I could participate in this language I was constantly hearing it being spoken and I 
was constantly receiving prompts from the environment around me to speak the language so I was reading it I was speaking it I was listening to it and that makes a huge difference so it might not be that easy for my kids but I feel like there's still hope okay there is still hope that they might learn that language okay and people learn languages at any time even though I know that some people do just do not have a flair for it but on the other side of making a connection to the extended family not only to my sister's kids who are their cousins but to other people as well even their grandparents yes they do talk with the grandparents but I feel like even those conversations are stilted, you know, it's very one-sided in the sense that it's the grandparents always trying to, you know, push the conversation, ask them about their day, about school, and the answers are very limited, okay? They don't say more than needs to be said. When I see pictures that my sister would send me, pictures of family gatherings or even videos where my parents are their grandchildren, so in this sense, my nieces and nephews from my siblings, when I see how my parents interact with them, that very personal interaction, because they are all in the same physical environment, those feelings come again, those feelings of, oh my goodness, these kids will never really know their grandparents. Um, they will never really know their cousins that well. And as they grow older and become even more enmeshed in Australian culture, that concern grows even bigger for me. But like I said, maybe I'm just overthinking and there is still enough time, right? Now, some people might suggest that I visit Nigeria more frequently yes but is it really practical visits to Nigeria would be very temporary things I mean I don't see myself going to Nigeria with the kids and spending anything more than a month there if even that right if even that more than a month and visiting frequently at this time let me be very honest with you I don't think I can afford it it is expensive Australia is far far away from Nigeria it amounts to about two days of travel so it's like 21 hours but because there's no direct 21 hour flight from nigeria to australia it means you must have some kind of layover somewhere there has to be a transition in the middle somewhere and some of these layovers take hours so at the end of the day the trips i would say are practically two days long and just on the practical aspect of it flying to and from nigeria and spending about four days traveling is already a nightmare um, but added to that is the financial involvement, which is not very convenient. So let me know in the comment section if you have experienced this or if you are experiencing this and how are you managing, you know, have you thought about any other strategies outside of the normal video calls and the occasional visit back home? How are you doing it? How are you doing it? But like I said, okay, and this is for the benefit of those people who will come here and say, hey, hey, here she goes again, making another struggle story video um, just to discourage us. I was going to address you, but I feel like it's a waste of time. That's your cross to bear, okay? Bear it by yourself. <laughs> you can see the video however you want to see it. You're responsible for how you interpret things. Um, but yeah, I really need to hear your opinion on this thing, okay? Lily, do you agree with me? You do, right? Yes, so please let me know in the comment section. I'm going to be reading your comments. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video before you go, subscribe to join the family, and I'll see you again. Thank you.